<laughs> Hi guys, here we go, another episode of The Rocket Minute. I'm your host, Jason Wampler. Um, this is going to be a quick one. It's 10.45 p.m., and you know what? If you get up at 7, you start wearing out at around 10. So I guess I'm not uh, Superman anymore. Um, just a quick lecture. Um, I don't know if you remember me talking about the Titan Six. That was a twin-engine rocket, one of the last of which with uh, custom-built uh, solid fuel boosters from uh, uh, Morton Theocall, the same individuals who misdesigned and misassembled uh, one of the space shuttle boosters that blew up the, uh, the Challenger. Um, boy, they're never going to live that one down. But uh, I want to explain something to you. Let me um, reverse this camera. Let me just hmm, let me show this to you. Um, and look at that. You can't see a darn thing. Um, let me, let me do something else. Let's see if I can get a larger marker and just draw a detail of a nozzle. Um, the, uh, Wampler WLC2, uh, 2P, uh, uh, level one rocket. It's, um, uh, it's, uh, that's kind of what we're building right now. The nozzle, I'll go ahead and show that to you. Primary, primary nozzle, in other words, venting, hot, exploding, exploding, controlled explosion gases, uh, solid fuel mixture of either chromite, uh, ammonium uh, perchlorate, uh, uh, and, and dan and, you know, which is incredibly, incredibly powerful reactor oxidizer. And then you want to go ahead and just... Uh, so, so that's it, man. Potassium nitrate, ammonium, potassium, ammonium perchlorate, uh, the, the black powder, uh, which is called, considered chromite, it's black as pitch. Uh, and then blend it with epoxy. Now, okay, so it's here, here's what we've got going on uh, for nozzle choice. I'm going to keep things basic, but, you know, I, 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 uh, I want to do this. Um, so let's go ahead and show you I put a line through here too. I don't like drawing things. I just like building stuff in my head and actually going from my thoughts to some IDs. Ouch! God dang, that hurt. Ouch. Um, there. Pax is joining the, the. Oh no, that was. Oh my God, that was Valencia. She jumps in the back of this chair and really digs in. I tell you, it's not their teeth. Cats, cats you got to watch out for. It's their claws. You know, they're they're really they're really fast and. Cats can run up to 30 miles an hour and sustain that speed. Anyway, I want to show you what we're considering for all the time. Guys, I'm getting dangerously tempted to actually build uh, some rocket motors and test them for this rocket. But I have to work out some uh, design uh, considerations for rocket motors. And I'm not really at that point yet. We will tomorrow night resume after, after I get my vehicle fixed. I jumped into the uh doing the drive axle on the driver's side okay now he's going nuts you can hear him i have no idea what's on his mind actually no that's valencia she, she wants another boyfriend huh anyway so these rockets um the, the, the lily cloud the lily uh lily class uh two powered rocket the one that we've been working on i want to show you some detail on my accomplishments uh, of course, um, I did want to also show you, um, um, oh, where is it? I did have to buy it to the right here. Um, as we are progressing along, um, remember I told you, you need a certain type and amount of tools, uh, to build a one inch diameter rocket. Um. Where is the camera? This thing right there. You can see the thinness of the walls. Um, that end is this is where I'm gonna have to figure something out about the uh, the, the the mystery of uh, how to build nose cones. We'll get back to that mystery later. Um, I did want to show you detail of the rocket. I want to show you the detail of the actual coupler I made out of that uh, temporary plumbing pipe. And I knew the coupler was going to be thin, but the wall thickness is about that. A very, very thin craft paper, not two or three pages of newspaper. This was such a tight fit, and this took about 20 minutes to make. 
I do this. I thrive on that type of work, but it tests your patience. I just want to show you how that goes on top. This guy goes on top of the rocket like that. Slips in there like that. Folks, when you when you custom, I still got to loosen that up a little bit, but it, it goes, there you go. It goes right there. You can't even see the seam. It is right there. Okay, so here we go. Um, so let me, let, me, let me break this section apart so you can kind of see where it is. I still have to watch a YouTube video and figure out how to get the other part of my axle out of the car. There it is right there. Um, so there's the coupling. Folks, you, you're going to have to get inventive. I'll, I'll help you as best as I can. But you're going to have to get inventive with finding uh, coupling material. Um, so I just wanted to show you that. The other thing is I'm going on McMaster car, and I'm taking measurements with a $2 gray plastic uh, um, dial, not non-dial caliper, just for measuring the inner and outer diameter of, uh, of uh, uh, the rocket motors and tubes and such and so forth, determining how far you have to go to machine something down to fit something or what you want to get. I'm going on to McMaster Car Online to get phenolic tube, but I don't think the phenolic tube is going to be big enough for our application. So I'm McMaster. Oh no, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't say that. I, God, I'm just going all over the place, guys. I'm really tired. I'm not slurring my speech. I'm not drunk. I haven't. I don't drink alcohol. I don't take drugs. I'm just really exhausted. I've been fighting my car the whole day, um, but I just um, okay. Let's. <laughs> Let's finish exhibiting the rocket and talk about nozzles and talk about uh, motor casings. Um, there you go. So here we go. Here's um, we put the cuts in the top. Those even up pretty good. I got the multi-use tool. The um, two fins of all the gosh darndest things. Uh, the two fins. Where the heck? I don't know how to aim this camera because I don't know where the camera's coming from. I think it's right there. And by the way, tonight's going to be a short episode. You see how that mounts in there that just kind of kind of saddles in there like that. Um, and then there's one on the other side. And you can see the uh, back profile of the business end. Um, so these fins took me probably about four hours to make. I don't know if you can see the detail on the side. But uh, I, I should do this. this is, that's lab. This is lecture right now. Uh, but cutting, the, cutting and running the fins... Um, evening up the texture of the fins, evening up the size of the fins, and evening up the tip ends. These are a semi, semi diamond delta, you know, clipped at the end type of fins. And they're, I, they're, they're made. God, look at this. I just hate doing anything this way. Um, you know what? I'm waking up. <laughs> Let's just go to the studio over here because this is ridiculous. See, the, um, it's not really a very wide angle. Land, uh, camera. I just um, and this is my good phone, by the way. I have a, I have a not so good phone too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm waking up and I got the main light on as well. There we go. Okay, so where are we at? Okay. Oh, that's my new black table, by the way. I cannot return it to uh, Walmart because I put scratches in it. I think I'm gonna even throw the receipt away, guys. I gotta stick to my guns on it. I've got a chair. I've got the stand with the light. I've got myself a studio. So I'm going to put my glasses on and see what you're seeing as well. We could probably. Excuse me. My enthusiasm is waking me up. I don't knock that over. That should be fine. Um, you'll notice a few things more new in my studio. I don't have anything stacked on the bed. Um, I have the uh, green DeWalt table set up behind me. Um, power tools are inside. Trash cans underneath my two table, which, for lack of a better word, I have christened it. I put a cut in it. Uh, oh, here you go. This is this is where we're at. This is um, the total length of the uh, um, the LC uh, 2P, that's a class one, which means it's a basically the smallest size this rocket will get. Um, 
anything up to uh, anything up to uh, 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 let's see, class one up to class fifteen. So class fifteen would be basically um, <laughs> a very 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 tall rocket, an actual launch vehicle. So here we go. Um, and I left my paper on nozzle theory over on the desk. Well, let's just talk about the rocket first. Now we've got everything in Panoscope. And uh, you know what? The cats are going to come along and knock this over and paint the carpet red. I have yeah, uh, red Hawaiian punch in there. I love Hawaiian punch, by the way. I'm addicted to that. And we got something to eat after this, too. Anyway. Okay, so let's pull this apart again. Okay, so here, here's the lower part of the rocket. This is this is the upper part of the rocket. Um, again, folks, I, I don't. I'm still in the process of developing the format of this uh, of this show. Uh, it goes an hour. It goes an hour long each time. But it just it just uh, it just seems uh, it just seems like I think I need to do. Oh my goodness. That would just take forever to upload, but I have two phones. I have one for business and personal news. The phone you're watching me on now, um, hey, there he is. There's Paxton. He, he always does that. He always interrupts the show. How you doing, buddy? He's, he's a good cat. He's grown to a big, strong cat. Um, uh, I'm watching The Fablemans. Of a, the latest movie by Steven Spielberg, and um, it, it's somewhat of a disturbing movie. It's a good movie, but I, I don't. Some of the subject matter it, it makes me a little upset. Um, okay, so as you see on here, we'll just revert to a show and tell, and we'll get to nozzle theory later. At least for this rocket, I can't find any footage of the uh, the uh, Titan II rocket, the Titan VI rocket. Can I interview? Because he's gonna have Okay, my cats are fighting now too. Paxton, Paxton, hey, leave your sister alone. Uh, um, my smaller female cat, Valencia, she's a spoil sport. She used to be able to beat Paxton up because Paxton and, and her got acquainted with Paxton was just a kitten. Now he's probably about, probably about he's almost about three or four pounds heavier than she is. And uh, what she doesn't like is the fact that he can kick her butt. <laughs> He's bearded. And, and Valencia is a real spoil sport. And they hiss each other. She roughhouses with him. Then he roughhouses with her and kicks her butt. And she gets upset about that. Um, I don't even bother to rotate the camera. If they want to come in the view, in the frame of the camera, the view of the camera, that's fine. Um, this material was from the, uh, the emergency plumbing kit that I, I'd gotten from low, uh, well, from that hardware that starts with an L. I can't mention store names anymore. Uh, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not being paid to advertise their services. So that is copyright infringement. And I agree with that. Um, but in that emergency plumbing kit, this, this tube would fit inside this tube here, which is, I think, one eighth wall thickness, PVC, 200 PSI burst. But, you know, I've obviously sanded down and paint prepped the surface of this material. That other coupling material that I got from the emergency plumbing kit, that stuff looked like, well, it's got to fit. But I go in to fit it, and guess what? It's one, one, one sixteenth the way off, or, or well, I would say about three sixteenths off, just, uh, all the way around. And guys, I got to tell you, I got, uh, I've got two belt sanders, one of which needs a belt, I, I would built it, it's vintage, it's all aluminum, and it weighs like a, I think it weighs like a, as much as a couple of bricks. I've got the other one, it's a plastic one, from Ryo, uh, Ryobi, uh, but I can't, I don't know if I can make sure how either. I'm not, I'm not hired as an advertiser for any of these brands, so I gotta leave it alone. Hey, hey guys. You want to get sprayed? Leave each other alone. My cats have got a real wide-eyed look at them on their face right now. They know I'm going to spray them if they misbehave. The cats, they react to that. So, 
still trying to get my cat's illegal uh, uh, catnip so you know if a dealer accept the deal in anonymity and secrecy to get my cat's cat catnip. And if I didn't think they were acting crazy before, but we're going to act crazy now. All right, good. So they settle down. You know, anyway. Anyway, so this is, so this material, I had to sand it down. And I think the wall thickness is probably less than 1 32nd. It still, it still has this rigidity to it. It's not craft paper. And I, um, craft paper, because it has so many downsides to it that I don't use it at all. I think it's a really bad idea. Um, craft paper is basically uh, uh, paper pulp, pressed and steamed and held together by glue. These, this is plastic. Um, it's a type of polymerized PVC. Um, it's heavier, it's stronger, but it's a petroleum distillate product. It is not, uh, you know, either that or it could be soybean uh, plastic. I, I don't know. It is not craft paper. This stuff has a memory and it rebounds from its memory, number one. Number two, it's flexible. Number three, it's machinable. Um, you can't machine craft paper when it wants to set in a certain size. If you're lucky, you can find something to, make it to, to serve as a, uh, well, as a coupling. And so far, the kits I've gotten from the, you know, from STC Quest, they, they had these, these couplers that join the body tubes together. And supposedly, it kind of looked to me like there was a standardized uh, design of certain diameters of motor tubes between the two major manufacturers of the smallest rocket kits. But, uh, you know, no such animal. So, um, look, folks, um, I want to build these projects together with you. Excuse me, I'm getting really heavy on it again. Um, I'll just try and lead by example and do the best I can. So, I would, you know, look around and bargain hunt and look for materials and, and be inventive and creative for non-metallic non uh, uh, materials that will work in the applications you want it for for the rocket. You know, don't don't hesitate. You can you can end up finding a battery, you know, a battery tray for you know, a, a dune buggy or a sand drill. And so they're going to sell it to you for like 30 bucks. But you know, it's the darndest thing. You can even get one of those online, uh, um, you can get those online for free on Craigslist free stuff. Or you can go to Walmart and get the same darn thing, same materials and same function for about maybe five or seven bucks. So don't spend a lot of money on a, on a trinket that looks very, very basic in design just because it's convenient to buy it there while you're shopping for a few other things really bargain hunt around and if you find those good bargains don't you know don't sit on them give me a call give the uh, mail members or not, not even i said why i say that uh and, and members of your rocket group uh men and women alike and see if they want something uh just find your own micro uh your own micro mills and uh all right <laughs> listen to me your own micro bank um that's impossible too um God, I'm going nuts. I'm going to get censored for this. You know what? We're going off on uh, talky talk and details and technicalities that don't involve physical contact with the rocket I have before you. And I'm just absolutely exhausted, like I said, fighting that car all day long. Uh, the thing is just brutal and intense. Okay, so here we go. We have the main fuselage right here. We uh, the, 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 the upper motor tube housings right here and down here. Uh, then I, I went ahead and cut the sanities down, but you got to leave a, bit, a little bit more room between the top. And goodness, excuse me, the tops of the upper motor housings, which you, know, which you cut slant, and and the bottom of the actual uh, uh, transition the shims and the transition fuselage itself. Uh, reason being, if you want to clean up the angles, I got lucky. I've been doing this and building twin engine rockets. I, the last one I built, actually every single twin engine rocket I've built, um, I've had some major flight issues with, the only because, I can't believe I'm signing my own convention by saying this, but only because of uh, the problem is the motors that would fit the twin engine rockets wouldn't power up. If they did power up, they wouldn't power up at the same time, so I had crooked flights. But we're gonna fix that this time. Um, 
So anyway, so here we go. So now we come back. Uh, this nice uh, swept, uh, and actually not swept, uh, semi-diamond clipped uh, delta fins, one and two. Okay, if I feel like I'll put more on, but these one, two fins by themselves, like I said, took me, took me four hours to make. And I just, I just don't have that kind of time to spare at all. So, um, anyway, I'm falling asleep again. Dang it. Removable motors. Here we go. We discussed. Guys, I'm so sorry. It is nearly 11 o'clock at night. I'm just exhausted. Um, okay. Okay, so the, the opening in the top isn't that good, but um, I need a clear path from the, uh, the, the, uh, the separation charge. It goes all the way from, the, from up here to through this tube on this top and it curves and it goes to the bottom of the uh, the bottom of the side of the uh, fuselage transition and I gotta tell you some of us might end up I don't know uh, no I won't even say that okay so why am I saying that to begin with um, well that's one option the other option to get exhaust or how to say uh, uh, to get pressure gases the force of the uh, the, uh, the tail end uh, separation charge at the top of the motor, which we haven't discussed how we're going to make the motor yet, but I was getting to a little bit about that earlier this evening. And we're going to wrap, we're going to wrap down a conduit to this. Uh, maybe we'll just go through a hole all here and, and dig it through the greatest section. Mostly I don't want it to be unsightly and I don't want it to affect coefficient of drag. Um, let's go ahead and put this back on. I want to talk to you about motor bracing, but God's honest truth is, I don't know how the heck I'm going to brace these motors. So as soon as I come up with uh, something that I'm going to daydream about, I should be listening to the person speaking. Uh, like, cool, what was me? Okay, so you have all that. It, it's not that light. It's, 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 it's not heavy, but it's not light. I don't ever appreciate stuff that's so light it can blow away and drift for miles. I think those are toys for little kids. I think it's maybe to introduce them to the joys of model rocketry. But I, I don't... You know, I, I, I don't like those things myself. I try to be as mature and stable as they play with Canada. Anyway, that's an almost another story. Okay, so now we've shown everything. Exhibit A. But, let me take off one of these motor tubes again. You know what I think I'm going to do after I get my car fixed tomorrow? Um, oh, what a pain in the butt that stupid little toilet has. Um, okay, so here we go. Okay, so I made the decision if I can get this stuff on a regular basis, I'm gonna I'm gonna line this with a phenol cartridge and I'm gonna load the fuel and lumber grain in here in the tube. It's gonna be an SSTO. However, how well is it gonna hold up on the pressure when the engine's been burning for that long? So I think I'd like to put in a little bit more of the uh, uh, less burn rate modifier and I'd like to I'd like the rocket to burn a little bit faster. Um, so Anyway, um, but I want to talk to you about nozzle design real quick, and then we're going to call it quits. And I swear, I can keep talking about rockets, I'll just be fast asleep. <laughs> How the hell did that work? Let me um, get you nozzle theory. And I want to talk. I'll just keep talking as I'm walking. How long am I going to wake myself up? Um, I want to talk to you about nozzle theory. Upon closer inspection of the uh, Titan 6, if I'm even using the nomenclature correctly, upon closer inspection of the Titan 6's nozzles, I noticed something fairly interesting. And this is going to cause me, I hope you've heard that. Um, um, I don't know if you can see the uh, purple outlines on this, but um, you know, a black marker might be better. You know what? I think I brought one this time. Let me put some of my toolbox down yonder here. One of many toolbox to have on one outside. Um, man, man, man. I thought I brought the black one too. Oh, praise Jesus, I did. See, if I'm using the, uh, the, the name of the rocket that I saw with the uh, port engine blow up because of issues with the structure, uh, support of fuel grain and fuel pellets, 
Um, obviously, the no nozzle will go here. I want to discuss with you the shape of the nozzle. Um, not necessarily the shape, but what I call a vector thrust, fixed vector, vector thrust tunneling in a solid aluminum block, or what's easier is a, a machinable high temp, high pressure block of, of, of uh, goodness, phenolic. So here's the business end of uh, the, the Titan VI main thruster here. Okay, my goodness, people, I can barely function. I'm very cute, so awake. <laughs> I look drunk and I'm gonna get censured. Guys, I'm just exhausted. Okay, let's um, I'll draw your basic drawing. Sleep. <laughs> Dad got it. And why was I thinking of share? <sighs> Just terrible. Okay, so here's some. Um, we're giving you the business end view. This is a basic, basic uh, block nozzle. And this is the. Uh, oh, screw How the hell am I going to do this? Okay, I'll, I'll draw a uh, side. Okay, so here we go. Uh, guys, I'm just killing myself here. Okay, show side mage. Okay, so there's another one. I don't know how to do this any but I gotta be honest with you, I'm not really an illustrator. I'm not an illustrator. I don't like drawing, I just like doing. Uh, okay. Nothing's cooperating right now. Okay, so uh, bottom, the business end. You look at the bottom of the rocket motor on those Titan 6s and as well is going to be on this particular rocket for stability. Bottom, the largest nozzle, largest opening on the nozzle will be canned offset uh, 30 degrees uh, right angle to the long axis of the uh, long vertical axis of the rocket ship itself. And that nozzle will be nearly 75%, 80% of the, of the of the workhorse portion of that nozzle that the motor is going to be forcing uh, fuel. I can't oh, that's down. That's a liquid rocket motor. The um, <laughs> when the solid fuel is burning, it's going to come out the uh, seventy-five percenter. It's angled at 30, 30 degrees, um, and that's supposed to help people maintain it around. Oh my goodness! I'm sorry, guys. I'm short circuiting. I'm getting so exhausted. Um. 30 degree right angle, imaginary long vertical axis of the rocket ship. These main, these main nozzles, it's, it's all one nozzle, it's a compound nozzle. It's gonna be aiming off to the side at around roughly 30 to 32 degrees. This guy will be dead flat vertical, 90 degree angle with the launch pad itself after, before, you know, countdown. And then of course, I'll give you a side view. This isn't very good. Um, this is how I'd make it a single piece of aluminum because honestly, to the truth, they, well, I'll probably end up machining it down a little bit, but they put so much heavy stuff on ships anyway. What's a couple more ounces of aluminum? Anyway, um, but you can see this, 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 um, 78% of the rocket stress is, excuse me, 78%, 78, 78 to 80% of all the thrust coming from this nozzle setup like the uh, Titan Six we were talking about, is at a 30 degree angle. I'm thinking, well, that's interesting. So I take an imaginary line, an imaginary line, now I've got two pens, so, oh my goodness, nothing cooperating. If it doesn't want to be found or touched, it is definitely gonna do that. That's, that's your artificial intelligence right there. Now, 
Um, I can't read my own handwriting. Dirty. Okay, so that <laughs> I'm the I'm the worst illustrator. Um, okay, so there you go. Okay, the fascia, the vector, the vector fascia, the main two main nozzles for those those ammonium perchlorate uh, uh, boosters. Um, there's at 30 degrees. This is this is right here. If you can see that, that's um. <laughs> bottom of the rocket the business end that's angled at um i want to say 33 degrees um that that thrust out that allow, that allows to escape i would say almost 80 percent 75 to 80 percent of the total impulse charge that that come total impulse exhaust <laughs> that comes out of the uh comes out of the nozzle end the um the other the other 20 to 22 percent Come from the, the same combustion chamber, but that takes up the other twenty percent, and that's that's straight on uh, uh, thrust and thrust alignment. These are what I would call compound motors. In that, at uh, time goes on, engineers are entertained unless what they make seems to be gradually increasing in uh, sophistication and cost. Of course, over the years, this is this is the thing. Anyway. Boy, I tell you what, I think I'm going to be committed, condemned, and forced off YouTube after this because I'm coming across, like, you know, I, like I'm either taking my meds and they're kicking in, or I'm a drug addict and I've been drinking too much alcohol. Please, 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 people, don't hold it against me. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, and leave your comments. Say something like, you do look uh, dangerously close to intoxicated, and I'll say, I, you know, dear kind vice, I'm not. I'm just absolutely exhausted to have been lately. Okay, so we don't pay attention to that. That anything that's got a cross dirt, I'll do that too. This is um, this is uh, again the bottom view of that. Um, I can machine a nozzle like this. I can just remember the numbers too. Uh, um, <laughs> that's my first slur. Thank goodness, I'm under possession of the demons. Please forgive me. So that's this is rough, uh, rough consideration of these uh, compound vector nozzles. One motor, two compounded uh, vector nozzles, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I want to keep going on, but uh, just the airframe alone. Um, no, nah, this this looks like somebody just smoked pot. Dude. I don't smoke that. I don't, I don't drink, I don't smoke pot, I don't do anything. I'm just really exhausted. I'm ashamed of myself. Okay, so we've got, um, got all this. We'll talk about financing things. And we'll tell you what... Uh, did I just say that? Oh my god. See, now I'm mixing in the uh, fact that I'm, I'm pitching U.S. government for research and development grant. I can't believe I said it. I tell you what I want to do. I want to finance this, this, and this on my YouTube channel. I don't even know the name of it. By by helping, I uh, keep asking you guys to send, to, 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 to hit the like, hit the subscribe, send me postcards. Um, I'll, I'll leave an address or uh, invite me to get together having a, did I just say that too? <laughs> Going nuts. No, 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 don't do any of that. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, leave comments in the comment section. Folks, I gotta go. Next thing you do, I'm gonna be falling asleep on the top of the table. The cat's gonna be sitting on my shoulder. The other one's gonna play uh, uh, play gymnastics and I'm gonna ramble on. This video's gonna take forever to load anyway. I gotta clean out my phone. But um, just like I said, just to recap tonight, uh, just a little bit of show and tell. I'm really proud of how the, uh, the, the uh, 2P, uh, the 2P, uh, 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 actually, uh, no, excuse me, the, uh, the Waffler LC2P rocket is coming along. And that is it, that's his total height. Look at that, doesn't that look incredible? Um, okay, so, and then of course we talked about compound nozzles. 
rough angles. Um, oh, that's right. I promised you a resource tonight. I'm referring uh, you to another YouTube channel. I certainly hope that isn't a violation of copyright law. Uh, Mike's Inventions. You want to look this guy up because he's something short of extraordinary with regards to rocket science and math that makes the determination of whether or not if it holds if the rocket holds up to the math it's subject to doesn't doesn't blow up on the spot then guess what you are uh, in possession of a rocket to obey the rules and you find a proper center of gravity center uh, center of pressure Mike's going to show you how so the, the website is called Mike's Inventions. Look him up. So he'll help you with the sub center pressure and center of, uh, of, uh, of uh, gravity to go into. And so, you know what? I know free, free form random thoughts and I'm going nuts. Mike'sInventions.com. Look the guy up. He was very, very nice. Um, I think he even responded to a couple of my texts. He's a very nice guy. Um, anyway. And that's that. He'll help explain uh, finding your center of pressure. Um, I'm still in, you know, I'm still in limbo about, you know, what kind of comments I'm going to take. Um, if I if I run across it, you know, I want you to leave, leave, leave hit the uh, subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment. But from time to time, I will peruse. Actually, I'll peruse all my comments. If something is a little bit too in, intolerable. Uh, I, I will censor it because this is supposed to be a, a learning channel. So, um, look at that, that nice, 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 nice. Okay, so I'm really trying it off, folks. Guys, we uh, show and tell the rocket. We talked about uh, a nozzle theory, and uh, I, I think we did some good advertising from one of, one of my supplier vendors. But like I said, I've got that copyright warning from YouTube, so I need to do things right or I can't do it all. Anyway, my name is Jason Walter. This has been another very, very, very sleepy, slurry, I'm absolutely exhausted episode of The Rocket Minute. We'll see you tomorrow. And I swear I'm going to recharge my batteries now, right now. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.